More than 60,000 books have been written about Abraham Lincoln, but a new one out today offers readers a view of the former president unlike any other. It's titled How to Be Abe Lincoln, Seven Steps to Leading a Legendary Life. And its author, Jonathan Shapiro, joins us now. He's also adjunct law professor at the UCLA School of Law and a former assistant U.S. attorney. It's great to have you on the show. We'll go through some of these steps to becoming legendary. Great to be here. Thank um, you very much. But given all the books on Lincoln, what inspired you to write this one? Uh, I got tired of having very smart, wonderful friends of mine tell me they were done with politics and angry mm. at the United States and sick of the division. And so I wanted to offer people a roadmap that Abe Lincoln gave us about how to be happier, healthier, better Americans, and how to create a more perfect union. And so the book lays out seven steps that we can all take to be Abe Lincoln, and in so doing, oh. make ourselves and our country better. So I'm looking at sort of the short version of them, and I love the first one, laugh. Well, you can't be Abe Lincoln and not laugh. He was renowned for his sense of humor. People used to go to the White House not to meet the president, but to hear his jokes. Uh, he admitted that he needed laughter in order to live. He said, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry. And then elsewhere, he said, if I didn't have laughter, I would kill myself. And we know he suffered from depression. Uh, laughter mm. was his coping mechanism. And I tell you, I don't see a lot of laughs in our, uh, in our leaders now, no. at least not intentional ones. So, Jonathan, off of that answer, and we're going to put the seven steps up on the screen again. They are laugh, improve, navigate, collaborate, object, love, and now, the feeling of now, get it done now. What do we do as a country when you consider the fact that five of those seven steps, I think, are probably obviated by the shadow, the lingering shadow of a menace in America who used to be president of the United States. Well, I tell you, uh, one thing that we keep in mind, I, I find it helpful to remember that during the entire Civil War, Abe Lincoln kept the government open. We didn't have a single government shutdown, even though half the country was trying to destroy the federal government. And the reason why we didn't have a government shutdown under Lincoln is because Lincoln took the idea off the table. In a special message to Congress, he said, government continuity was a right of the people that can never be abrogated. So I think the way we get out from under the shadow that you talk about is to get back to the basic principles that Abe Lincoln lived by which is, in a democracy, what matters is never one person. It's all of us working together to make ourselves and each other better. Uh, you, you put up the list of the seven steps. I want to focus on maybe the one that surprises people, which is love. People who knew Abe Lincoln said that his greatest motivator, the thing that made him who he was, was his great love for his fellow Americans. We've lost that. When I was a kid, we actually as much as we might disagree, there was a fundamental love for one another simply because we were Americans. And I think the shadow that you're talking about uh, led us to forget that. Hmm. And the book seeks to remind us. Jonathan Al Sharpton, in, in the middle of uh, the menace as, as referred to in Donald Trump, but, but in the division in the country, one of the things that uh, comes to mind when I hear you talk about the principles of Abe Lincoln uh, is some of the things I learned growing up in the civil rights movement is not becoming uh, like the uh, kinds of people that you're fighting. Otherwise, they win even if you win the battle. Tell us how Lincoln would deal with people that were outright hostile, people that divided the country and wanted to take him out and eventually did kill him but he would never become the same kind of person that they were. First of all, Reverend Al, you wouldn't remember this, but the last time we spoke was on the set of Boston Legal, where I was a writer, and you, uh, <laughs> Reverend Sharpton, was playing the character of Reverend Sharpton. And I have to tell you, you are wonderful. 
we cast I, that I, part I've been very studying well. how to play him for a long time, but go ahead. Thank you. Right. And I, at the, at the time, I said, we don't really write for Reverend Sharpton. We simply try to channel the force that is Reverend Sharpton. But in answer to your question, uh, and I, I quote him in the book, Abe Lincoln said something that I wish all of us would remember. He said, I do not like that man. I must get to know him better. Hmm. The way we deal with those who are hostile to us is to remember they're human beings. And as human <coughs> beings, we owe one another the empathy and the love that Lincoln showed those who were trying to kill him. Abe Lincoln never let insults get in the way of him attaining a good. He never let insults affect how he approached a problem. He was a man who lived by fact, by reason, and by empathy. And until we get back to those Lincoln-esque Lincoln -esque principles, we can never be what Lincoln wanted us to be, which was mm. a nation of people who actually cared for one another. The new book is entitled How to Be Abe Lincoln, Seven Steps to Leading a Legendary Life. Jonathan Shapiro, thank you very much. I can totally see why you wrote this book. Thank you.